Gaming like a new. Hello and welcome to the channel Gaming Like a Noob. I'm the noob and I call myself Sensei Me. And if you're subscribed to the channel, I say thank you very much. And if you're not, I say please do, which would help me out a lot. Now, uh, we have a semi-final to be played. First leg, I guess, here. Yes, first leg. And um, we've just sold um, Marcus Rashford for 80 million, or could become 80 million. Uh, our financial are still not good, I must say. So, yeah, I don't really know what more I can do now. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of pliers we can use today because we've it's only one day since we played our last game and yes i did play with a lot of reserves so we do have the opportunity to play with a lot of good players hopefully so what i am thinking let's clear the entire squad and let's start from the beginning david de Gea. we put ferguson as a reserve there Tariq Lamte, and then we go Delict with Fofana, and as the left, we of course have, where is he, where's our little Alfonso Davis, there he is, right midfielder, we're going to go with Jaden Sancho today, there he is, defensive, of course, Jude Bellingham, and the offensive, we go with Bruno Fernandes today. And at the left, Kylian Mbappe. Up front, we're going to have Erling Haaland together with Karim Aragami. So a good, strong side. Um, thankfully, because we rested a lot of players in the previous game, that's good. Uh, Deskiglio has um, said that he's going to retire at the end of the season. So, um, yeah. Guess we have to find someone new to have in that position. I don't know. But a Chile. Uh, let's go here. We're gonna have. I think we're gonna go with Dovi on the bench, and um, I think we want Morgan Pierce, Andy Stockbridge, and we go with Shola Shortire. I think I'm going to squeeze in Garnacho there as well. And then we want a striker. And I think... I think our main contender to become the next youth player to come in is and uh, is Woodall. So, yeah, we're going to play with him on the bench. So this is what we're going to use today against Liverpool in the first semi-final. And... Um, if we're lucky, they've not uh, rested all, all of their players like we have. So it could be hard for them to keep up with us. But it does look like they're going to play with most of their good players. So, um, yeah. Let's go with... Uh, oh, wasn't much of reaction from the player. Let's go! First leg... I guess it's on Old Trafford here now. And it's Manchester United against Liverpool. Lamptey. Okay. So we, we've met Liverpool um, quite a lot of times, actually, in, this, um, in later stages of tournaments and stuff like that. So... Uh, We've been the two dominating team in all oh, in the whoa world of football during my save here. We're into season five here, and oh, and United and Liverpool have been the two dominating teams, um, and um, yeah. That's just the way it is, and I believe that we're going to be struggling um, a while now because we need to get our finances in order. We need to start getting up uh, and getting those youth 
talent up and running and hopefully uh, reaching a potential that they have. Oh, Sancho, Mbappe, Sancho! Yay done, Sancho. It's 1-0 Manchester United. Thank you. Good run from Sancho. And good save from Mbappe there. And uh, yeah, the keeper should have punched that more away or tipped it over the bar or something. Here comes Liverpool. Oh, thank you. Lamptey saving us there. Bellingham for Haaland. Haaland. What can he do? Moves out, gets it into Sancho. Back to Haaland. Bellingham. Lamptey was almost... Lamptey almost got control of that one. That's, um, yeah. Lamptey. Haaland. Lamptey. Come on, Bellingham, Lamptey, Delict, Ufana, Ufana to Mbappe, Fernandez, Mbappe, Mbappe, oh, come on, let's beat the crap out of Liverpool, Bruno Fernandez with the corner, oh, no, Mbappe picking up the loose ball. Bellingham. Long ball. Oh, did not do us any good there. Still only 1-0. And, um, yeah, I don't know. They are not very looking very tired either. Uh, so only Konate. Um, so I wonder if they've been resting a lot of players in the weekend as well. Come on. Uh, get a grip of this. Or if maybe they're not just maybe they're just not using all their best players. It could be that as well. Um, here's Adayemi through. Adayemi two nil. Two nil. Man United. I mean, if I aren't mistaken, I thought I saw Jordan Henderson, and this is. It is Football Manager 2022, but we're into Season 5, so I think it's kind of late in the game. So he should be quite old, 35. Yeah. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, somewhere like that. No, he's only 31 here, so yeah. Henderson is, of course, declining for them. Here's Haaland. Oh, he gets it in there, but uh, Mbappe... Wasn't prepared for that one. Haaland. Bellingham. Sancho. Oh. Come on, come on. Delect. We've got some really good players in this team. Um, I think that the... Um, I mean, we know we started in the, with this uh, Football Manchester 22 with a Manchester United side. Which didn't go so great. Uh, since Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, was it? Yes, it was Cristiano Ronaldo, um, among other. And I put all my emphasis on getting Erling Haaland and didn't really care about the rest of the team. So I did have two good strikers with Cristiano Ronaldo and Erling Haaland, but we couldn't get that to work. Uh, but in this save, I started in a completely different way started building from the back and yeah we've done so much better in this save not to mention the two strikers i did get quite cheaply in the start of the game uh Cheshko and anayemi uh, they were golden for us um the bad thing about this save is that cristiano ronaldo gave up after about eight months or something he went out injured uh, with a long long injury uh, he was supposed to be out for almost a season so he ended his career which was of course um, oh Erling Haaland makes it 3-0 which was sad uh, because I I mean I like Cristiano Ronaldo I think he's um, he is a United player uh, so yeah 
but uh, yeah we we um we the delict to buy delict and to secure our central defense was of course the main reason that things have gone so good this time then we got Jude Bellingham as well which gave us control in the center of the midfield and um, yeah then eventually we got Haaland as well which also has been very good for us and Mbappe we got him after the first season he his contract ran out and we got him uh, which also meant a whole lot for us now of course Haaland Mbappe has cost us way too much to be honest so we need to get rid of them before we go bankrupt or something so we need to get rid of of at least one of those two and um the question is who will buy them who will who can afford them i'm not going to be paying any payoffs uh in their salary demands and stuff like that no either they go or they don't um with them we can still win a lot of trophies without them we can still win, but it's going to be a whole lot more work around to um, get it to work, of course. Uh, Sancho very tired. I think it's time for Morgan Pierce to come on in. Lamptey is very tired, so I think we're going to begin Skiglio and United makes it 4-0. Was it uh, Sancho or Haaland? Hey, let's look at the replay here. Adayemi. He gets it in there, and there is Sancho and Haaland. Haaland is the scorer, so two goals from Haaland today. I think Adayemi is going to come off now and let Anthony Woodall end the game here. We've done all three changes, and uh, yeah. Here we go, here Liverpool goes. Did they come, I should say, perhaps? Oh, good one. Nice. So, 4-0. That's a good result. I don't think they will be able to pick that up in the second leg. So, um, this should mean that we are in the final of the Carabao Cup. Um, we're not, I'm not going to be too sure of myself. Of course... There is a small chance Liverpool will run over us, especially if we get a lot of injuries or stuff like that. Uh, they still have a chance, but really we should be safe here with 4-0. Um, and hopefully they won't score today. But here they come, Dybala. Oh, good tackle by Delect. Getting in between there. That's nice. De Gea. Long ball towards Morgan Pierce, but yeah, Johnson seems to have done now. The ball just ran out for a throw in. There's Johnson. Oh, the Skiglio was in between there, but here's Morgan Pierce. Bellingham, Fofana, Delict, Fofana, long ball home to De Gea, long ball up towards Woodall. No, Liverpool got control. Bellingham intercepting. But a not so good of a pass though. That's a shame. Fofana, Delict, Bellingham, Haaland. Haaland getting free here. Can he get it in? The Skiglio. And the game is over. 4-0 in this first leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final. Good one. And uh, yeah. I guess I'll just see you in the next game. And so we're here. FA Cup game against Salford away. And um, yeah, let's see what players we can use today. Bruno Fernandes is injured. Will out, be out, I think it was 12 days or something. So another 10 days, he will miss the replay against Liverpool, which is after this one. Actually, so yeah, that's interesting. Um... Fofana is in need of a rest, so let's bring in Barachile then. And let's put Anel on the bench so we can rest Fofana properly. 
Bruno Fernandes is now completely out of that game, so I guess Guerrero would be a good substitution there. How does it look on the fitness for the rest of the play? Tariq kind of tired. Real Madrid wants him. All right. Um, look, Kylian Mbappe, as usual, can play one game, then he needs to rest. So let's go. Roll a short tire. Um, yeah, I guess he's going to be. Keeping on playing, uh, Erling Haaland. Um, I don't think I need to do much more now. Um, thinking maybe we should put in Zakaria Bouget to give uh, Lamptey a little rest for the next game, which is against Liverpool. So we're going to do that. And uh, have a little feeling that I want to give Morgan Pierce more playtime. It is Salford. We are supposed to win against them. So, um, yeah. I think I'm going to do that. Now, Woodhull. Oh, you're outside of the... Since Jadon Sancho can play both left and right, I think I'm going to be playing Woodhull in that position instead of um, Kylian Mbappe. So let's see what that will do. Anything else? We will have him on the bench so he can come in for um, one of the strikers if need be. It's, I'm interested in seeing what can become of this Zakaria Bouget. Um, yeah. Let's go. I think he Bouget is one of the players that actually won um, a trophy or a medal for us winning the um, the World Cup for club teams. So that's um, a nice little thing for him. I think uh, he's just signed and comes right in and moves, comes along in the uh, World Cup for club teams. So yeah, I guess that's got to be a good starting point when it comes to your career Manchester United but let's move on to where we are now and this is the FA Cup against Salford and um, yeah marvelous ball from Pierce to Adeyemi oh so much worthy of a better faith that from that pass from Morgan Pierce Morgan Pierce with the corner and Arayemi is there, but no. Short tire. Gets it to Delict, to Stockbridge, to Delict, to Bellingham, out to Davis. That's a good cross. Davis, can he get the ball in? He, oh, he tries to reach short tire. And short tire goes down. I felt it was short tire that ran over. Funny, but um, we got a penalty out of it. Haaland with the penalty. And he scores. It's 1-0 for Manchester United. 31st goal for, of the season. What a goal-scoring machine. And look at that. Little Salford. Salford, or however you pronounce it. Has actually got our, our, our big screen here. And we don't. We don't have that at Old Trafford. Now, jumping into real life thingamajing. Uh, I've seen some of the plans for either renovating. Let's look at this first. Adeyemi, can he score? No, gets too far out. But Morgan Pierce is there. Oh, Adeyemi, Bellingham. Oh, I've seen there's been some plans for either building a new Trafford, a new Old Trafford, or um, restoring Old Trafford. I'm all for restoring, to be honest, to develop what they... I know that the, the train tracks is a problem there, but uh, for me, it's no... It's no... Um, nothing to talk about. I don't want to lose that classical ground, that that 
those square meters where they were aiming, even if it's not the same ground anymore, there's not the same uh, grass, there's not the same dirt, there's nothing that is the same, but it's geographically exactly the same pitch area that has hosted all those memories that that's been created at Old Trafford. So, oh, look at that. So I definitely don't want them to build a new stadium. I want them to restore and to expand on the one that they on Old Trafford. But I know it's going to cost a lot more money and uh, I'm not the one paying for any of it because I don't have any money. So um, I understand that it's... Uh, a question of that and and that if you want to get a better stadium for Manchester United and uh, that that they can afford then I can understand maybe they need to build a completely new one but it would be a sad part because I I really have this feeling that it is in the exact geographically same place as all those memories has been even if everything around it has changed so uh, yeah but i guess i guess not everybody have that whoa alayame two nil not everybody of course have that way of looking up on it so i can understand that some of them just want to you build a new stadium and uh, have a new completely new experience and everything uh, for me that's not what I want um, but uh, yeah as I've said I have nothing to say about it I'm just gonna have to accept what ha what's happening and, and that's with everything that happens uh, with your club because uh, we are all oh, at Yemi we are not uh, Elon Musk or or, uh, or somebody else that with all those, or we're not even Sir Jim Radcliffe, so we don't have the money to do anything about it more than perhaps some of you have the, the money to go and watch them live, which is a very expensive thing as well. Um, so, uh, yeah. But, but um, of course, you have, however little you have to say about it, you're always entitled to your opinion. And my opinion is that I definitely... Oh, Morgan Pierce get to score! I definitely don't want them to um, go away from Old Trafford. I want to be... I want to stay there and uh, build upon that. But, um, yeah... We're just going to have to wait and see what happens with the real United. But uh, here we are playing really well against Salford as well. It, it took some time, but now we are up and running here. And uh, it doesn't look like Salford is going to have any chance at all of doing anything to us. I'm going to do three changes at half time, I think and see if I can bring in some younger players, some promising players. I'm pretty sure that Woodall would be one of the players to come on in. Alayemi, ooh. I think Alayemi is the one that's going to get to the rest, so to speak, in the second half. Oh, Morgan Pierce goes down, but... Nothing giving. Bouget to Haaland. Oh, what a pass. What a receive. But he was offside. That's too bad. But look at this pass from Bouget. Ah, too bad he was offside there. Because that was a perfect pass otherwise. Oh, well. Not much to do about that. We've done good so far. And 10 minutes left of the first half. But the, the, the highlights are getting fewer and fewer. So, uh, yeah. 
Let's see what we can do. Adayemi, yeah, we can do the substitutions already. Woodall, I think we're going to bring, take out Bellingham, actually, and put in Gary Dosi. Or, De, yeah, Dovi, De, Dosi Govi. Dovi, yeah, all right. What else? Davis is a bit tired, but I don't think... What do we have on the bench? We have Adam... Could we bring in Adam Ferguson and give him the opportunity? I think we're going to do that. Like that, and then we go pump our fist and go like that. Start second half, and we're going to be... It's going to be interesting to see if things is going to change, or if... Oh, here's Woodall. Oh, wasn't quick enough there, unfortunately. Long ball, Delict is there, Dovey. I think we still have a, a, a brilliant future ahead of us. Now, getting rid of... Oh, let's look at this. Morgan Pierce. Oh! Getting rid of uh, Mbappe and Haaland will put us back. But will it put us back uh, long enough for me to get fired? That's the question. We do have youth players that it seems like and that I feel can become as good as, as uh, Mbappe and Haaland and all of them, but uh, who knows? We need them to, to develop into that as well. Um, one of the players that I have really high hopes for is, of course, Stockbridge, but so far he's been good, but not that brilliant. Uh, things are going better with Bruno Fernandes in that position. Most of the time. Here's Woodall. Oh, he passes to Haaland in that situation. That is pure class from Woodall. Unless it was a defender that took the ball away from him. Let's have a look here now. Try to see it clearly. No, it was a pass. It was a pass from Woodall. Oh, oh, oh. That was really nice from Woodall, I must say. Here comes Salford. Um, Bouget, Delict, Dovey. Oh, long ball towards Woodall, but no, didn't, didn't reach that one. Here's Baragile. Delict, Dovey, Baragile, Delict, the Stockbridge. Davis, short tyre, long ball to Woodall, Woodall, oh! Come on, Woodall, Anthony Woodall. Hopefully he will put a, a couple of in here. There's Morgan Pierce with the corner, no. Haaland is there, but he's not strong enough. Here we go. Salford with the ball, Salford in the attack here, Delect to Ferguson, to Davis, to Baragile, to Stockbridge, to Davis. Short tyre, Stockbridge, Woodall. Here's Davis, Stockbridge, long ball towards Morgan Pierce. Gets it into Woodall! Anthony Woodall! He gets to score as well. After that brilliant pass to uh, Erling Haaland for 5-0, he scores the 6-0. Good pass from Morgan Pierce here. Oh, it's nice. It's nice when things works out with youth players. I should have put uh, Warburton in for Davis, but look at because look at how tired Davis is. Maybe we'll have to do without him against uh, Liverpool, and that's not that good, I think. Uh, Liverpool could still be... Um... Oh, look at that! And ooh! Good free kick from Morgan Pearce. Almost David Beckham style. And uh, we've certainly missed that in United in the last couple of years. Or in real life as well. Here's Salford. Coming in now. We headed that away. Let's hope we can uh, keep a clean sheet. We do. 
it's full time. We win it 6 0 in the FA Cup against Salford. We did our business. Uh, we were supposed to win against them, so yeah. And I guess I'll just see you in the next and last game of this episode, which is against Liverpool in the second leg of the Carabao Cup. And so we're here, the replay game or the second leg in the semi final here of the Carabao Cup. And uh, yeah. Let's move into it, because I think we're going to have some problems. Um, under 23 played, so we can't use uh, some of the players. We only have a couple of days, and then we're going to be facing off against... Um, um, oh, brain freeze again. You've heard me say that before, I guess. We're going to be facing off against um, Manchester City in the league, so um, yeah. We're going to keep him Mbappe. Yeah, let's see. He could. Yeah, he's back. Um, Alfonso David should be rested, but I can't play Drew uh, Warburton. Uh, I can play Discoglio, though. So let's let uh, Discoglio play today. Um, I think I'm going to keep it like this. Um, we do have... We do have 4-0, a 4-0 lead, which is, of course, a good thing. So, um, yeah, we just don't, we just hope that we don't lose with four or more goals then, and we should be cleared. Um, no, I would do not want to go hard in on tackles. Pump our fist and the assistance recommendation. Uh, Jude Bellingham has just gotten back from a cold as well. Um, I decided to treat him at the club because if I sent him home, uh, he would be home still. It would take three to four days to fix at home. It would take one to two days to fix at the club. So I just had to uh, pick the club um, as a, the a alternative for him to get back so he could be fit enough to play today. And he's on the pitch, so let's just hope that the cold um, won't bring him down. Oh, we were lucky there, Haaland. I think I'm going to tell my players to focus. We're not in the final yet. Come on, people. Come on, United. We need to play better. Better Chile. Come on. All oh, this is dangerous. Salah, Mane, and... Oh, good one. Had a Emmy on the run, but uh, not even close there. So Liverpool have started out as the better team today. Uh, they have Fabinho on the centre of the midfield. I guess they have... Uh, he was injured or, or tired or something like that in the previous game when Henderson played in that center position together with Rice. And they are playing a lot better today, or maybe we're playing a lot worse than we did in the first leg. Here's Adayemi. Adayemi, we get a corner out of that. That's good. I'm pleased with that. And, oh no. And, um, we also know that in the other semi final, that is being played between Norwich and Chelsea. So either Norwich or Chelsea will be our opponents in the final if we manage to not let four goals in in this game, that's for sure. Mbappe. Sancho. Bellingham, Stockbridge, Delict, long ball, but nobody on the run there. But here they go, Adayemi. Oh, it looks nice with those 4 0 at our back. 
feels like we're gonna make it but um yeah liverpool has certainly been the better team today that's i can't say anything else about it there's virgil van vrij or de vrij or whatever lobacek there's mané Fubinho, Mane, Salah. Oh, there we go. Makulele, Leke. Makuleke. The is going to have a shot on that, and it's awarded, of course. I uh, didn't see any problems with that. It's not Makulele, it's Madueke. Madueke. I'm sorry if I'm butchering names, but uh, yeah. I've said time and time before, I'm from a different generation than uh, than today's generation, where we are more mixed today than we've ever been before. So uh, it is more. Let's have a look at this. Oh, it's more more um, common to uh, have these uh, names in. Um, you know, sort of things. Back in my youth, we... Um, well, it was the Swedish names and it was uh, English names in television. That's what we heard and... Uh, probably... Yeah, we didn't get to... to experience those tough to pronounce names more than maybe perhaps in some World Cup... in, in, in the Football World Cup. And uh, often those, um, yeah, they didn't go very far, those teams, more than Brazil or, uh, oh, let's look at this, oh, Brazil or Argentina, and um, yeah, and they don't have that weird, mostly no, don't have that weird uh, name. It is m mostly these uh, African names that is hard to pronunciate and, and to understand how to pronunciate, of course. Um, African teams has made a, a major, um, should I say, upgrade or whatever. They have started to, to really play well. Before, they, they could... They could have some really good players before, but oh, they were never organized. They were all over the place. We could see that they had pace, they had the technique and everything, but uh, they had no organization in any of their teams. And uh, yeah, but we, they had some stars. Uh, Roger Miller from Cameroon, that was a, a, a cool player to watch, but uh, yeah. Now that they have learned more about the, 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 the game of football and uh, more and more people, more and more people from Africa have moved to Europe. Oh, let's look at this, Salah. Oh, thank you. Uh, more, it's more and more common with uh, African names in Europe. So, uh, and especially in football. So, uh, yeah. Oh, let's look at this. No, Sancho. Ooh, I'm so old that I actually seen John Barnes and those players play uh, back in the 80s. And um, that was not very nice because uh, many supporters weren't very, very nice or very pleasant to... Uh, players of colors at all uh, i remember in loads of games john barnes oh let's look at this we get one back yes it's an own goal john barnes the the supporters and it wasn't always the away support or the the opponent's supporters it was actually even the liverpool supporters sometimes that threw in bananas to him and stuff like that, which is just poor, poor, poor form. Poor form. But anyway, 2-1 for Liverpool here after the first half. So let's get in here. Let's uh, point fingers. 
I'm not happy with the performance because I'm not. They haven't played well. Oh yeah. There is always a. a I mean, I can have a a, a sense of humour about anything. I don't. I don't see that there is anything that you can't joke about. Uh, to be honest, as long as as uh, it's not a, a, a pure. As long as you don't do it to to upset some people, I don't see why there should be a problem with anything in comedy, to be honest. Um, if your intention is to poke at some people or some some sort of people, then then you're, it's not comedy anymore. So uh, the intention should never be to poke at somebody, but if if it's just uh, prejudice or or, uh, or truth, I mean, most humor is built upon two things. It's either prejudice or it's the truth which uh, makes it funny. And um, yeah, in either case, what's the problem? Yeah, I mean, who gives a rat? Anyway, let's move on with this game. I've talked too much, too long here. Let's see. Bellingham, Delict, Bellingham, Stockbridge, Bellingham, Haaland, Baracile. The Skiglio, Stockbridge, Mbappe, Mbappe on the run, Stockbridge, Adayeme, oh! Oh, oh, oh. But there is one thing I would like to say before I end the conversation of all the, the racism and stuff like that. It is actually that I don't think that we as supporters should have supporters should have anything uh, we we are not supposed to hear what they are talking about on the pitch i don't feel like that that we have anything to that we should be allowed to listen to them because yes they will say stupid things to each other because they want to get the other player out of balance to sort of win the games and some of them are not, uh, what should I say? Some of them don't have the quality as a player to beat them at the pitch. That is the same thing with with things that I don't really want to accept. The, 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 that player acts and, and fall down to the ground and, and stuff like that. But it, how, however much I hate it, it's still a part of the game. And, and there is a special culture with it that some some uh, parts of the world it is a culture that it's part of the game to be able to get get away with it and to fool the judge and the same thing is when they're talking on the pitch i don't think that that should come out in public what they are saying to each other out there even if it is uh, racist remarks or something like that uh, I, I i think there was something about suarez or something like that where he's used the, the N-word. Now, the N-word in his language is, is ju is, it's just the same as saying black. So, I mean, he didn't really use the N-word in any other sense than the way that it is spoken in his language. But never, never mind about that. I remember Sindiran Sidan when the Italian player that he headed in the chest. Nobody ever talks about him. He did actually talk a lot about doing stuff to his sister and, and things like that. And as I said, it's part of the game. And you have these are players that earn a millions. I mean, they, they earn a lot of money and shouldn't be that um they shouldn't be that sensitive to be honest uh even if it's even if we are and if we are then oh that players did what he did he stopped the french 
He stopped the French from winning, but I can remember that the Italians won that game because of the sending off of Sinid and Zidane. So he, I mean, he, he, he's probably, I don't think he uh, knew anything about Zidane's sister, but uh, yeah, I think that's the way it is. They, they, you need to get people off, when you're facing off uh, as a, lower class player against player of that caliber like Sydney Sedan. Oh, let's look at that. Oh, you need to get them off balance or you're not going to be, you're not going to beat them. They're going to be running over you completely if you don't get them off balance. And um, yeah, there's different ways to get them off balance. And some, some ways is to to say the wrong things to them and stuff like that and i don't think that that should come out to us then if if we're going to stop um people doing that we're going to have to stop everything that is um inappropriate and for me acting is an inappropriate and you can't get away with it you shouldn't get away with it. I mean, it's supposed to be the one thing that I would have liked with VRR. Uh, to have a greater look at the players that throw themselves to the ground, acting injured and stuff like that. But uh, nothing happens there. So, yeah. But never mind. Let's move on. We, I'm pretty sure many of you have a completely different view on that, and that's fine. I'm, I'm completely fine with people having a different view than me about that, absolutely. And I can understand where you're coming from and why you think that way, but uh, yeah. So it is Disciglio, Baracile, Anel, Stockbridge, Disciglio, Haaland, Woodall, Baracile, it's over! We do lose the game. But we lose it 3-1 and we are through to the final. Oh, let's move on to this. Let's do a little summary of this episode. And um, yeah, let's do there. Let's move on here. We're going to see 3-1 um, win for Liverpool. I don't like it, but uh, yeah, we have that City game to play as well, which is going to be annoying i guess uh first leg triumph yes man united book wembley plays uh does it say who we're going to be playing no no we're just gonna have to wait and see yeah chelsea we're gonna see that up there i see erling Haaland needed rest yes mozala was superb for liverpool yes we might have been, doesn't help them because we reached the final and we're going to play Chelsea in the final. So that's interesting. And um, Arsenal versus Manchester United is being uh, rearranged. And yes, next round of the FA Cup, we're going to face off against Arsenal. So that's interesting. Let's start with the finances. We are 75 million back despite our selling rashford so we're having problem getting out of this swamp here with the money and uh, i don't like it um we're in for a tough time here uh, i know we're gonna get quite a lot of let's have a look here we're gonna get sponsoring ships money um no main kit duration five year total value this is what we get in um uh, 3.6 3.9 6 million 6 million 8 million 24 million 24 27.5 40 million 47 million 65 million so i mean we will get in almost 200 million pounds once the season is over but being 75 million pounds back will be a major problem for the finances because that's we're going to go we're, gonna, we're losing money every every month we're losing money not this month since we 
did sell Rashford. But we're losing money every month until we get there with the sponsorship money and everything comes in. And then we jump up there and then we slowly go down throughout the season, losing it. And then we jump up when the new season starts there. I mean, last season we were 43.02 million. Or was that the season before that? It was the season before that. Before 13 million, we were only... We were down to 26 million pounds and we perhaps sold somebody there and then we get all the sponsorship money and stuff like that and we jump up to 122 million and then we drop down and now we're we've been down to 140 million and i mean if we look at this where we we have a net debt of 730 million and we have two large loans which now we have only one only one but it's at 542 million pounds and we have a remaining on that loan for 531 million pounds holy smokes and we're paying two million a month until 2050 that's that's just ridiculous ridiculous amount of money that we have put ourselves in debt here just to get those player players but we have won we have won very much and we've had we are very successful but uh, our finances is crumbling and we should try to get rid of a couple of players i'm even thinking about Bruno fernandez maybe we should try and sell him as well um let's go into competition here Premier League, uh, we have the board expectation that we're supposed to win the Premier League. We have a good lead on it. And if we take a look and go to history and uh, let's see here. Where is... No, we are into Manchester United. What did I do? I said go into Premier League. Yes, and we go history, past winners. We have won it three years in a row and Ferguson never managed to win it four years in a row so I'm hoping to be the first manager in Manchester United history to win it four years in a row that would be cool now going back to the Champions League let's go in here and past winners we have won that three years in a row as well I think Real Madrid some time did win it for four or five yeah, five times in a row here for Real Madrid at the start, which was a sad thing. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's going to be nice if we can win our fourth. Uh, we know it's going to be tough. And are we going to face off against Real Madrid in that uh, thing imaging? The UEFA Super Cup. Uh, let's look at the past winners here. We won that three years in a row. And um, that would be nice if we can continue to win that one as well. The FA Cup, uh, let's look at the past winners. We have only won, actually, we've been in three finals. We've been in the last three finals, and we've only won it once in those finals. That's, um, hmm. we lost it last season against Liverpool. That's what Liverpool won last season. Rapperoni. Carabao Cup, though, uh, haven't we won that a couple of seasons in a row yet? Two seasons in a row. And, uh, yeah, maybe we can get another one. Community Shield. Uh, let's have a look. Three years in a row. Uh, Arsenal, Liverpool, Liverpool. Uh, we, it's the teams that we've been facing off against. So that's interesting. And um, I think we've gone through all the tournaments, all the things here now, yes. So a final in the Carabao Cup is waiting us against Chelsea. Uh, it's going to be played the 1st of March. And uh, we have a FA Cup game against Arsenal coming up the 2nd of or 7th of February. That's pretty soon, isn't it? It's, four, uh, it's We're only in January. I thought we were in February. We're only in January, so that's pretty cool. Um, then we have... The Champions League, we're going to face off against Real Madrid the 18th of February. So 
we do have a couple of things coming up before we get into those games. Uh, next episode will be City, Fulham, Blackburn. So only league games next episode. After that, we have Arsenal, Brighton, Arsenal in the FA Cup in the very last game of that episode. That's going to be interesting. And then we get to start the Champions League again. Oh, that's a tough one. But I think we're going to be... We're going to have a chance. We, we've still got some good players left, even if we've been selling out a lot of good players like Seyvald, like Fishko. And like Rashford, we still have a lot of good players left. I would have loved to get Erling Haaland sold. Uh, and yeah, maybe even... Um, what's his name? Oof, it's, it's got some brain freeze here. Would have been nice to sell Haaland and Mbappe uh, so that we can get rid of these extreme salaries that is really bringing us down i mean yeah maybe we'll get sacked because we can't win after that um who knows especially if they end up in some english team and uh, they uh, sort of surpass us just think about the fact if liverpool were to bid to buy erling Haaland and mbappe from us and, uh, and we've already having problems facing Liverpool. That could be um, some tough situations. But there's no club is interested in uh, Haaland, which is uh, a shame. Let's see if we have... Uh, let's go into the squad. And let's have a look at Kylian Mbappe to see if anybody is interested in him. Paris Saint-Germain is actually interested in getting him back, but they want to loan him, not buy him. And I don't want to lend him out. I have no problems uh, with with him as a, as a player. I want to get rid of him because of the salary that he's making. So he costs us way too much. That that's the only reason. If I could have, if I could lower his contract, I would. Uh, yes, we will confirm those changes. If I could lower his contract, I would keep him. I would let him stay at the club. Um, but I need to bring it down a big amount. Uh, maybe get rid of many of these uh, clauses and bonuses. And he can keep the high salary, but we need to get rid of loads of things here. Or lower his salary and keep a couple of things here. But, uh... I can't, I can't do both because it's, it just costs us too much. That That's just for sure. And, uh, yeah. But he's a good player. He's done a lot for us. And uh, he's been here now for four seasons. Uh, this is his fourth season. And, uh, yeah, never been a below 7.4 in average rating. So, and he's doing his best season, actually. 7.79. Very interesting. How old is he now? 27. So he's coming into his prime. And it's going to be interesting to see if he's going to be playing for us or if he's going to be playing for somebody else. Um, but anyway, I've I've talked for too long now. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, episode. Do like, subscribe and uh, leave a little comment down below. I would really love to hear from you. And... Um, Stay safe, have heaps of fun, and I'll just end with bye-bye-bye-bye.